Wise Worlds Playground here. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, if this is the first video that you're coming to look at on figuring out how to put the custom firmware onto the PSP, you're at the wrong spot. Um, as you can probably see, I do have two uh, little hyperlinks up. Um, step one is to the Magic Memory Stick. Step two is to the Pandora's um, Battery. And then step three is this video. So go ahead and do those two steps first, and then come to this video. It doesn't matter what firmware you have, and it doesn't matter what type of PSP you have. Both videos will apply to you, as well as this video. So please check out those videos before you start at this step. This is step three, all right? So go check out those other videos first. Now, after you have your Magic Memory Stick and your Pandora's Battery, you can see it's open, Pandora's Battery, go ahead and put them both into your PSP, as I will do so right now. Pandora's Battery going in. And like I said on my Pandora's Battery review, um, if you put it in and the green light illuminates, you know you did it right. It's illuminating and staying illuminated. What happened? Oh, my memory stick's not in. Alright, so let's take the battery out because that seems like a problem. Put in your magic memory stick first because I just encountered what you saw there is the green light stayed illuminated, which is not supposed to happen. So put in your magic memory stick first. Alright, it's in there. And then put in your battery. And let's see if the same thing happens. Alright, ready? Oh, it's upside down. I'll show you this way. Alright, I'll see if it works correctly. And there you go. So now that you got your Pandora's battery in and your magic memory stick, um, you're all set. Let's get started. First thing you need to do is to hold up your power button and hold down the left trigger. Alright? So now you're holding up the oh, sorry. Hold down the left trigger first and then hold up the power button. And don't let go until the screen pops up. Now that the screen popped up, go ahead and click install 5.00m33. This takes a little while, so I'll get right back with you once you're done downloading it. I'm just going to quickly show you here what it should look like during the process. As you can see, it says flashing files and gives you the percentage and everything. Um, if you're doing it correctly, this is what it will look like. So this, uh, ha this takes a little while, so I'm going to get back to you when it's all finished. Alright guys, so once you're done downloading that, it should look like this. It says uh, install is complete, a shutdown or a reboot is required. So go ahead and press X to reboot or uh, circle to shut down. I'm going to go ahead and shut down. Alright, so now it's off. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and push up the power button. And um, as you can see, it's loading up. So now you have your custom firmware on it. And uh, this is actually version 5.0 custom firmware. Even though you did upgrade to 5.03, this is custom firmware 5.0. Now, another thing that you need to, you don't need to do, but it's recommended, hold your power button up for two seconds to actually turn off the PSP. All right, now it's off. Now what you do is you hold down the right trigger and turn the PSP back on. And as you can see, it uploads like a, a recovery mode. What this does is it allows you to customize a few things. By scrolling down to configuration, so all you need to do, it, it starts off on um, toggle USB. I don't know if you can see that there. It says toggle USB. Scroll down to, or go down one to configuration and then press X. And then a whole bunch of stuff will come up. I'll just read it to you. The first one says skip Sony logo. The next one is like hide corrupt icons. You sometimes get corrupt icons because when you get custom firmware, you have the ability to download like to download applications onto the PSP. And when you do that, sometimes you get corrupt files. I've done this already, like the UMD dumper, which allows you to download UMD disks straight to the PSP. Sometimes you get corrupt icons. You can hide them, which I recommend. Uh, game folder, homebrew. Um, you know, just a few different things to customize. You can check it out yourself. Um, I, what I do is I go to, um, right off the bat, I go to uh, auto run program at PSP game slash boot slash eboot slash uh, PBP currently disabled. I'm going to enable that um, because that auto, auto auto runs my programs or auto autoly my game starts as soon as my PSP goes on basically. So I'm, I like having that so I'm enabling it and um, you know just choose what you want to customize. So then after you're done you just go ahead and go to back which is at the top go ahead and click X it goes back and then you go all the way down to the bottom, which is exit, and then you press X again and exit. And then your PSP will turn off. 
and then it will turn on. And then you're all good. Now you have a custom firmware uh, version 5.0 PSP. Congratulations. And thanks for watching. Please rate five star. Er, <laughs> please rate five star. Um, comment. Leave some nice comments. Subscribe. That's my number one thing that I really want is subscribers. So please subscribe. Check out my other videos. I actually did a comparison between the PSP and Nintendo DS if you're interested in that. So check that out. Um, and uh, thanks for watching.